Welcome to our second Agile seminar on attendance. Today's focus is on the way in which we communicate with our families, as well as finding new ways to address one of our underlying causes of absenteeism, which is bullying in school. In a recent report, the Children's Commissioner noted the importance of building and maintaining strong relationships with families, and she suggested that schools should approach communication with children and families in a caring and non-judgmental way. And you might remember the study by Public First confirming the shift in attitudes amongst parents and carers. It also recommended a review of how schools communicate with parents. And I'll put a few links in the chat to those reports. And on bullying, we know that it is one of the underlying causes of absenteeism. And in order to encourage those children back into school, we have to effectively address bullying in our schools. So today, I'm delighted to be joined by Lau Chadising, and he will be speaking to both of those issues. He's a principal advisor at the Behavioral Insights Team, which began life as a unit within the UK government. It's now owned by innovation charity Nesta, and is a global social purpose company of over 200 professionals worldwide. BIT's work draws on evidence from fields such as psychology and economics to see what drives human behavior. They then apply this evidence to help solve actual problems in society. Lau has been working on projects involving school attendance, and he's here today to tell us about those projects. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Lau. Welcome, Lau. Thanks so much. Um, just give me a moment um, to pull up some slides. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, and it's really great um, to be here speaking to you all. Um, hopefully, my slides are coming through right about now. Um, there we are. Um, so yeah, as has been um, described, I'm, I'm going to talk um, a little bit about how I think behavioral insights can help to improve school attendance. Um, and I really want to emphasize that word help. Um, nothing that I'm going to talk about uh, today is the only solution to the problem or the whole solution to the problem. I know having worked on it um, for a number of years, just how difficult a challenge um, school attendance is. So I'm just hopeful that what I go through today maybe sparks some thinking um, for you or gives you some ideas um, of approaches that you might be able to take forward that could help um, with this challenge. Um, and I should just say I've been yeah, working on um, education um, projects for the last seven years um, and before joining the Payable Insights team, I taught economics um, and politics myself. This is what we do um, at the Behavioral Insights um, team. Um, so she said, kind of, we're all, all about looking at how, how people are actually behaving um, out there in the real world, using that to design communications, to design interventions, to design um, policies that we think um, are have been created with how people will actually behave um, in mind. Um, and then because, you know, it's impossible to know exactly um, what's going to work, something that's really important to us is robust um, evaluation. So I'm not just saying, I think I've got a good idea, go off and, and run with it um, wherever possible. And usually we're testing um, these ideas in a randomized controlled control trial, which is the gold standard um, for evidence. Um, so running randomized control trials um, within school is, is basically my whole jam. Um, so I'm gonna, gonna speak um, to you today um, about some of those. As you say, in terms of our, our work um, within the education team, um, we've worked on kind of a huge variety of projects um, applying behavioral science um, to education. Um, we've run trials with more than 500 um, schools. Um, so chances are, are pretty good um, that we might have worked um, with one of your schools um, in the past. Um, and we've got several trials, um, which I'll, I'll touch on today as well, which are live um, at the moment. And we're always looking um, to do more as well. And before I go into kind of the specific um, examples of, of work that we've done um, on attendance, I've just flashed up um, our East um, frameworks at uh, the Payable Insights team. We absolutely love um, an acronym, um, and this is maybe the most um, famous one. Um, and yeah, if you take one thing away um, from the presentation, this is maybe the most useful um, slide that I'll present. Um, so what we're saying with our EAST framework um, is if you're looking to encourage someone to do something, try and make it 
easy, make it attractive, make it social and make it timely. And I'll touch on each of these a little bit more, but it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory um, in, term, in terms of how to, how to think about that. And the reason why easy is in a different color. Um, so this comes from Richard Fayler, who's one of the kind of leading lights um, in the field of behavioral science. And he, he quite famously um, said, if you can do anything at all, just make it easy. So, you know, if you're thinking about a communication um, out to parents, make it easy to understand and make it easy for them to take the action that you would like them to take. And you'll hopefully um, see that reflected in some of the attendance specific examples that I'm gonna talk about this morning. So the, the first project and kind of body of work um, that I'm gonna talk about is looking at whether we can boost school attendance with text messages to parents. Um, so this is a, a particular area and a particular type of intervention, which I've been working on for about three years now. And this all started actually with, with a project um, which I ran in Bristol um, just before um, the pandemic, which I think is also important, important context. So we were working with these schools in Bristol, which is actually also where I grew, grew up. So this was a bit of a dream um, project for me to get to, to go back and, and work on attendance where I grew up. Um, and kind of a few key insights came through to us from speaking to teachers and also speaking to parents um, in Bristol. And the first of these is attendance is often expressed as a percentage um, by schools. Now, I think percentages are kind of difficult for anyone um, to understand and, and wrap your head around what a percentage actually means. Um, and I actually think it's particularly problematic in a school um, context. So where we're talking about something like 90% attendance, for me at school, that would have been a pretty good um, mark uh, on a test. Um, but obviously when we're talking about attendance, we would really like attendance to be higher um, than 90%. So you know, we'd, we typically want to be 95% um, or higher. So we think that we picked up from speaking to parents seems to cause um, some confusion to think that, you know, 90% oh, is, is actually bad um, in terms of attendance. And the other insight um, which we saw was that most parents couldn't recall how many days of school their child had actually um, missed. Um, and this is a finding which was reflective of research done um, in the United States, which found kind of systematically and empirically that um, parents can't accurately recall how many days of school their child has actually missed. Um, and the, the final thing, um, which was true before the pandemic, it's still true now. Um, and I, as I touched on at the start, it's pretty clear that, you know, some of the barriers uh, to good attendance are really significant and structural um, and no kind of message, however carefully um, I, you know, we compose and, and create it is going to make the difference for those barriers. Um, but our hope with this kind of intervention is that we can improve attendance um, at the margin. We can move people up um, towards that level of good attendance. And kind of one of the things that is most appealing to me about this intervention is that if we can, if this intervention can help improve attendance um, for some kids, um, then those more, more difficult, more structural um, cases can be given more time um, with this, with this saving some time. So that was the kind of background um, research to this project that we were going to run in Bristol. Um, and this is the message um, that we then uh, developed. I think the slides will be be sent sent round. So if you want to, you know, take a note um, of this message, you can you can uh, have it then. Um, so yeah, this is what we developed, and there are several key um, elements to the message um, which I'm going to touch on. So the first is that we're we're using personalization um, as much as possible with both uh, the parent name and the child's names. This is based on quite a lot of um, research from behavioral science that basically people people like to, to feel that there's a personal um, touch to the communication and using the names um, helps with that. And I think it also kind of, you know, it helps to, to draw attention um, to be told, you know, this is about your child rather than um, attendance in general. 
and the core component of the message, the thing that we think is most important, which hopefully um, you can sort of see I, I queued up um, from those insights on the last slide, um, is that we're making a, the attendance really easy to understand by instead of using a percentage, we're saying Riz has missed eight days um, of school. So the idea is that is super clear. Um, and building on the on the comments uh, made at the start, um, again, you'll see hopefully that the tone throughout this message is designed to be quite positive um, and upbeat, kind of that, that caring and non-judgmental um, tone I think is, is reflected in what we were trying to do here with this message. Um, so yeah, another thing which we noted from looking a lot at the, at the kind of messages that the, the schools in Bristol that we were working with were sending out was that, you know, a lot of attendance uh, communications, particularly when going down the, the fine route are written in very, very legal um, language, quite severe um, in tone. Um, so we were, you know, we're trying to have, have a message here that kind of hopefully meets parents where they are, hopefully positively um, engages them and, and makes them want to help um, with this with this challenge of, of school attendance. And the final um, part of the message um, is really, again, trying to make this optimistic and, and forward looking. So obviously those missed days have now been, been missed. We've hopefully corrected the parents' uh, misconception around how many days of school their child has missed. But what we're then saying is, this next term, like it's, it's a fresh start. You know, we start we start again um, with the next term. You can have a big effect on Rosa's attendance, and we appreciate your help. So, what we were doing with these messages is we would look at the previous half term or term um, of data, that six to eight week um, period, and we would send this message at the start of the new half term um, or term. Um, and another feature which we had. Um, working with the schools on, on the messaging was that these messages would only go to the parents of pupils with below 95% um, attendance. So one of the things um, which I've learned um, from, from quite painful um, experience um, over the years is that I think communicating with a very high attending parent, even in the past when I think I've, I've, gra I've drafted a really nice message just saying, you know, thanks for your attendance um, being so great. Um, when we've tried that in the past, we've had messages back from parents saying, you know, why are you possible? My child's attendance is great. Don't communicate um, with me um, about it. So I, I don't know if anyone um, on the call has had a similar um, experience, but that was, that was definitely a learning experience um, for us in terms of the kind of messages um, that, that we put out. Another really important element to this project is that we asked our school project leads um, that we were working with to screen out um, any parents who they thought um, might be distressed by receiving um, a message like this. So if there was, you know, a really good reason for the attendance, if the school knew there was something going on at home, we said, you know, you don't have to send this this message out. So we gave that that option. And I think that's been a really important um, feature of, of the intervention, that kind of school level um, discretion. So this was the uh, result um, from this trial um, in Bristol. Um, and what you can see is that sending out those messages increased the number of students keeping good attendance records, which we define as above 95%, increased it by four percentage points. Um, we were really pleased um, with this result for a few reasons. One of them uh, was that we the trial was actually cut short by the start of the pandemic. So this kind of ran from jet, that January um, to March, and we were hoping to run it all the way to the summer. So we didn't have nearly as much data um, as we were expecting. Um, so to see this um, result based on that kind of short period of time was really uh, was really encouraging. And the feedback we had from the schools that we worked with um, in Bristol was also great. Um, I know the vast majority of them are still using um, this kind of messages and this kind of approach um, today, um, which is which is really pleasing. Um, for us. Um, and my next slide summarizes um, the, the kind of the state of the of the evidence. Um, oh, we skipped on a bit. Get back. Um, here we are. Um, so from our own trial um, in Bristol, and then also this has been done quite a lot um, in the United States by an academic 
um, called Todd Rogers, and they've seen similar um, effects um, in terms of improving um, school attendance and also the effects being particularly strong um, for disadvantaged pupils. So off the back of, um, of this work, um, both by academics in the US um, and what we did um, in Bristol, um, we've now been funded by the Education Endowment Foundation to run a large scale um, trial of this approach. Um, this project is called Bit Up. Um, you can find it um, on the EEF website. Um, the trial is currently live. Um, so we're working with over a hundred schools um, on this large scale um, trial. The first messages um, went out just after October half term. We'll be running it throughout um, school year um, and there will be results um, hopefully at some point. Unfortunately, these, these kind of large trials do, do take a little bit of time for the results um, to come through, um, but we should be looking at results in 2025, um, but also updates um, from us on the project um, throughout too. Um, so that that trial we're, we're really seeing as an opportunity to test whether the approach still works um, in a post-COVID um, context. We know that we know that lots has changed. Um, so it's possible the intervention might be more effective, kind of more children will now be below that 95% um, level. It's also possible that things may have changed so much that this approach is no longer um, effective. So that trial will give us really robust um, data on on whether this works um, or not. Um, so yeah, do um, if you're if you're interested, um, keep keep updated um, on that. So that's our our work on kind of communications to parents to to try and improve attendance, which is kind of one major strand of our our work on attendance. Um, and the other. Um, is looking at whether improving the school climate, improving how it feels um, to be at school could actually make um, that difference. Um, so this is um, a program and a, and a project that I'm super excited about. It's something that we've wanted to test um, in the UK for a number of years. Um, so, and it's actually um, happening um, right now, um, which is, is super exciting. Um, so what it's, what it's all about is really empowering the pupils themselves um, to try and improve the climate um, within schools. Um, and I'll just go into a little bit of detail on, on how that's going to work. Um, so again, this is a large scale trial. Um, it's based on some research um, done by Betsy Pallack um, in the US, um, which found that, that this approach was effective in reducing conflict um, within schools. And what we've been doing, what's been happening um, actually over the last few weeks um, is that we've been running surveys with pupils in schools asking them one kind of quite simple um, question uh, which is basically who have, who at school have you spent time with um, over the last few weeks and each pupil can name up to 10 other pupils so just like a very simple um, straightforward question and what we're doing within each school with the results um, of that survey is a network analysis, which essentially says, you know, how much is each pupil um, mentioned and who's mentioning who. Um, and we end up with these incredible to look at maps, which basically map the social connection um, across each school. Um, and then within that, what we're doing is identifying the kind of 15 to 20 most influential pupils, so the most connected um, pupils. Um, we're making sure we've got kind of good representation across year seven to nine, which is where we're running um, this program. Um, we're making sure that we've got kind of good diversity um, as well in terms of gender and ethnicity. Um, but the main component is this kind of, are you, you're an influential often mentioned um, pupil. Um, so I was joking with my, I would, I would not have been um, one of these people, but I think I may have benefited um, greatly from the from the program. Um, so these will be kind of our, our change makers, um, we're calling them. And when the program starts in January, what we'll be doing is we'll be sending um, trained facilitators um, into schools and giving these pupils the space to create whatever it is they want to create in terms of an anti-bullying um, program to try and improve the climate within their school. Um, so we're, we're super excited um, by that. I think there's great potential in this, this kind of approach, which is 
we're not creating the curriculum you know it's it's not being created in 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 dfe it's going to be the pupils in each school who know their school best who will be creating this um and as you can probably tell that you know the theory of change is that because these are influential pupils actions and you know high profile stances that they take against bullying will be paid attention to um by the other pupils within the school so the main outcome measures that we're looking at are actually ar are around um, incidents of conflict um, and bullying within the school. Um, but we do also hope that by improving that climate um, within schools, we may be able to improve um, school attendance. So we're looking at school attendance as an outcome measure um, as well. And this is just the result from that previous um, study um, in the US, um, which found that this approach reduced disciplinary incidents that were related to conflict by up to uh, 60%, um, which is yeah a pretty, a pretty exciting um, result. So we're really keen to see, does this work in the UK? We've done um, some adaptation um, for the UK context. So we've, we've taken out um, some Americanisms, we've tested it. Um, last year in a, in a small pilot. Um, one of the actual kind of surprising things is that we didn't change the curriculum as much as we were expecting. Um, that there were lots of things which were um, still still the same and seemed to really um, chime with British kids, um, which was great. And then, yeah, I think I've got time um, to talk through one final um, piece of work um, that we've done, which is, related to attendance in this case it was specifically looking at attendance um at tutoring sessions um but i think it it potentially um has has some read across um to thinking about school attendance uh, more broadly so i'll chat through it and this was us working with um the national tutoring um program um when it was run um by the education endowment foundation so year one um of the ntp um and obviously, you know, tutoring was identified as a great solution to help pupils um, catch up, but there's no way pupils are going to be able to catch up if they're not actually um, turning up um, to the session. So we were working to see, could we come up with an intervention and a way to have, um, make it more likely that, that pupils um, showed up. Um, and again, we were inspired by some, some research from the US, which was promising around short interventions that highlight um, feelings of similarity and kind of surface similarity between pupils um, and tutors can improve perceptions and actually the reality um, of that relationship and make pupils more likely um, to turn up. Um, so what we, what we did um, was create an online um, website um, and survey which both the tutor um, and any, any pupils that they were tutoring completed. Um, this was maybe the, the crowning achievement of my career is that I got a Spider-Man uh, meme um, into an intervention uh, design, which was, which was great. Um, the survey uh, gave the pupil instant, instant feedback um, on what they had in common um, with their tutor. So the idea is you, know, you, you find out that you and your tutor, you know, both speak French and Spanish and you're like, oh, you know, I never would have known that. I'm kind of excited to see this person now and, and talk about that. Um, and what we did was to try and kind of top up um, the intervention over time by sending reminders to the tutor um, saying, this is what you have in common um, with this pupil um, and encouraging them to, if they could, you know, if you know that um, Julia really likes football, um, you know, can you incorporate football related examples into the maths tutoring um, that you've got planned. And what we what we then did, um, kind of going back uh, to our East framework, which I introduced um, at the start, is we, we tried to practice what we preach um, in terms of these frameworks. So we tried to make the design of this platform as East um, as we possibly could. Um, so there was a really easy sign-in um, approach. You can sign in with just a magic um, link. You got your results instantly. You weren't waiting around. You got exactly where you needed to go. We had that Spider-Man meme. We had emojis. We tried to, you know, make this appealing um, to kids. Um, and obviously it was kind of, it's inherently 
um, a social intervention in terms of showing tutors and pupils what they have in common. Um, and then we also try to make it super, super timely by encouraging tutors to use it in the very first session to set that relationship off on the right track. And what we saw um, was that this quite light touch um, intervention improved attendance at tutoring sessions um, by four percentage um, points, um, which again is a result we're really pleased with. Um, we were working closely with four tutoring organizations um, on this. Um, we've continued to do um, something similar. Um, and I think particularly the Tutor Trust um, who we worked with kind of fully incorporated this intervention um, into their business as usual um, going forward and, and told us afterwards and in, in the subsequent years that they think attendance has been higher. Um, and that's that's not as robust as, as this trial um, was, but it's it's encouraging and, and really nice to hear. So those are the three uh, trials that I wanted to talk to you um, about today. Um, if you scan that QR code, this is my final behavioral insight, I've made it easy for you to send me an email. That'll take you straight to an email um to me um and either just hit send on that um straight away um if you'd like to just keep up to date um on our new results um just type up put a one um in that email if you'd like to hear about new opportunities to work with us um on trials kind of we always have um new projects um coming down the track um so if you'd like to hear about those when there are opportunities for schools to participate in a randomized controlled trial and try one of these um things out give a two um as well um and if you're interested in a workshop so i sometimes do workshops for schools or workshops with groups of schools where we can spend a bit more time um looking at the east framework and taking kind of a more personalized um approach um with the school so if that's of interest type a three. If you want to type a one, two, three, that's, that's fantastic. Um, if you just want to hit send um, on the email and take the easy approach, um, that's great too. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to kind of speak to in, in terms of um, what I wanted to share with you today. Um, but yeah, really look forward to the questions in the Q&A. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Lel. Uh, I should say, uh, Lal's agreed to share the slides, so we'll send those out alongside the recording. And Lal, before we stop recording, I just want to say a huge thank you to you for coming along and uh, sharing your insights with us today. We really, really appreciate it.